we have come to know far more about the human body. The ability to cure, prevent and treat diseases. Just imagine, when I was a child, 50 years ago, one of the big pandemics in Asia was smallpox. We don't have it anymore. Welcome back everyone to CNN Future Summit of Man and Machine. Now, one of the most profound scientific milestones in history was the sequencing of the human genome, deciphering the very code that defines who we are. Well, now the focus is on putting that knowledge to work. Banks of computers sequence the human genome, unlocking mysteries about how our bodies work and how tiny differences can make a big impact. Moving to the laboratories, researchers are using the code to isolate potential problems and develop unique ways to fix them. We'll start using much more targeted approaches to treatment, so the appropriate treatment for the appropriate person. But perhaps we can also look at preventing the development of disorders. And why stop at that? Once scientists know the code, they can start to manipulate it. We're switching from being able to read the genetic code uh, for the first time in history to be able to write it. The list of possible applications beyond medicine seems almost limitless. We might be able to genetically modify you know, certain kinds of bacteria to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. We're trying to uh, develop new organisms that could help move away from using fossil fuel. Uh, create new sources and energy. And the research is moving at a blistering pace. I think it will happen in the next couple of years uh, at the latest. Welcome back everyone. Well, we've heard some fascinating discussion, but I gotta tell you personally, this is the one that really fascinates me, the whole issue of genetics. Uh, Dr. Jay Kiesling, you've been doing some amazing, fascinating work, engineering a microbe that could eventually lead to a, a malarial treatment that's so much cheaper than what we have, changing the biology of it, if I, if I understand it right. What does that mean and what can it do? Well, if you think about how we engineer computers right now, we pull parts off the shelf, we assemble them, and they work the first time we put them together. Biology isn't that way. It takes a long time to engineer a microbe to produce a drug, say, for malaria. And this means that the costs are very high for engineering biology. In the future, we're going to see that we're going to have parts just like we have them for computers, for cell phones. We're going to be able to assemble biology. We're going to be able to program it, predict it, and build it very easily and very quickly, which means that it's going to reduce the cost of drugs. It will reduce the cost of producing, say, fuels, transportation fuels for our cars and for cleaning up the environment. And, and what, what is amazingly exciting is we were talking before, you, you're talking about genetically engineering microbes that can eliminate CO2, reduce pollution, uh, create uh, better fuel sources, this sort of thing, is this is realistic? It, it's very realistic and it's going to happen in the very near future. We're going to get to a stage where people are building microbes at will to accomplish a particular task, say producing fuel for your car. Yeah, it, it sounds like, uh, I mean, it's not that I go to the doctor a lot, but let's go back to that analogy. I go to my doctor, and once this reaches that sort of level of, of uh, well, manipulation or, or, or creation of, of, of different microbes, what, what, how's it going to impact me? Well, for instance, we might be able to uh, build a microbe that would, you would ingest, that would seek out a tumor, would produce a drug when it got to your tumor, and destroy the tumor. This is work that's going on right now. So we would have essentially therapies that would be silver bullet mm. therapies. And, and, and it's terrific on paper. We have genetically modified food. Some things have gone wrong with that. I think there's mm. some genetically modified pets out there. What if we start genetically modifying our children before we have them, uh, Alan? <laughs> uh, I don't think that's a feasible or desirable proposition. Possible? Uh, yes, it's possible. It was possible from 1980 onwards to conceive of making uh, children grow to six foot six and be basketball players by the injection of a particular gene. Fortunately, no one actually latched onto that technology, yet there have been all this furore over cloning when manipulation of that sort could be done already, but wasn't because people never chose to do it. Wow, okay, let's get back to the audience. Question? What's your name and uh, what's your question? Hi, I'm Jin Ming. Uh, my question is, should any limits be placed on scientific developments considering the fact that there are still issues on morality 
uh, on reproductive cloning. That, and that, that's a great issue. Mm. We did touch on it before. Uh, Joanne, let me ask you that. What, what sort of limits should there be limits? Can there be limits in this borderless, increasingly borderless world? Well, I think it's going to be very difficult. I think the, the key issues will be safety and security and intellectual property. And I think the best way for us to face some of these issues is to just make the world little, literally aware of this, such as what we're doing today, to, to literally talk about it and to educate ourselves um, before we can make any decisions about how the future goes. That's assuming everybody's a nice guy in the world. And then well, everybody's not they? a nice guy. No, yeah, Alan, you want to <laughs> check yeah, Yes, I would. Uh, and it relates to what uh, you've just said, Joanna, and what was said before, uh, misuse of technology. Let me give you one example. When kidney transplantation was first launched on the world, there was general abhorrence about the application of this. And then there was general acceptance when we saw how useful it could be to sick people. In recent times, we've seen children in India their kidneys being sold to fund the, the family. Now that's obviously a huge and criminal misuse of the technology, but because of that, do we say that technology should never have been developed? So we have to have a society where we can, scientists are in consultation with the public, and yeah. we have to legislate and regulate, but sometimes the excesses will happen with the best intents in the world by everybody else. I want to get your thoughts on this, Professor, whether there can be controls? There are strong safety issues, though, yeah, in yeah, robotics. Yeah, yeah, Number one, right? Yeah, right Number right. one okay, is safety, I agree, so... Okay. I go the safety issues, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. let, let, okay, Daniela, I, I'll play devil's advocate here, bring you in so much potential for good in this field. You worried about the evil potential as well? <laughs> I love playing the devil's advocate. <laughs> um, my fear is, as I said, technology is not neutral. And if you have a coin, you always have two sides. And you can't say, oh, we, oui. oh, yes, sorry, I'm speaking in French now. Um, you can't say, I will take the coin, but just one side. I don't want the other one. It's simply impossible. So I agree. Uh, with you to some extent, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to throw away the whole coin, but we have to be aware that it has two sides. And for instance, a very uh, easy um, example, if you talk about transparency, for instance, uh, we love the internet because information is accessible and it's transparent, but you can't pretend it to stop just here because it's my privacy. Either it must uh, be accessible or it mustn't. And, it, and the bottom line, just before we go to break, Jake, he's, it's unstoppable, isn't it? It's, it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. So we'll worry about it when we get to it then. All right. So far, we've heard some pretty amazing ideas of what life, your life, is going to be like in the coming decades. Next, we're going to ask our panellists for their personal predictions for the future. Stay with us. You're watching Future Summit.